You and Chris are going to be in here talking about God knows what. And, and folks, you, you don't even get to see everything that, that, that got recorded. Well, you might. That's going to be on the outtakes. I tell to get old, baby. Oh, you know man. Old. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to another uh, episode of The Retro Show. And uh, The Retro Show, of course, is an homage. You jumped right in there, man. I did. See there? It is an homage to growing up in the 70s and 80s and, and uh, uh, being the generation that we are. Uh, <laughs> Generate, never mind. Yeah. But uh, anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just, just to get things ready. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hang on. Wonder, Wonder Twin, Twin Powers, powers activate. activate! Form of a beer tap. Okay. <laughs> ah, that's good. Lost 40. I'll uh, say it before, and I'll say it again. Drink local. Drink local. Yep. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Retro Show, of course, uh, you can find out all about us at RetroShow.net, and that's where you find links to all the places you can view or listen to this podcast. And you can also uh, find out uh, how to go to our store Yep. and uh, order uh, lots of merch from there and... Uh, once again, you know, and I'm just transparent with you guys. I, I really apologize for the shipping prices on that stuff because it's like when you look at it, like, that price is not that bad. Oh, the shipping is more than the, okay, yep. yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's just where we're at right now. If I ever find another vendor, vendor, then we will, we will, we will sure do that. But, you know, <laughs> but some of them, they're different because they come from different vendors. This is like this company I'm using. It's, it's called uh, uh, Printify, and they actually – there's a lot of different vendors. So I, occasionally I'll go in there and see if I can get better vendors on yeah. there. Some of the things I've managed to bring prices down on some of those. So, really? Yeah. How about that? Because I'm a man of the people. No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> you notice I, Mama I'm said, a man, you know, nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing at all. I'm a man of some of the people. <laughs> there. That's accurate. That's I accurate. I just kind of dropped my head. Huh? Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm a man of some of the people. <laughs> You don't identify as a cat, do you? Anyway. Let, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, he dressed as a cat, not as uh, a lion. I think I can take him. I think I can take him. <laughs> Ricky and the Boss is one of the funnier social media <clears throat> accounts out there. So check those guys out. Uh, folks, uh, this week on the Retro Show, uh, the topic, should we ever get around to it, is the Little Rascals. And What are you looking at? Well... When I got these glasses on, it looks like I got really, really red, rosy cheeks. Oh. Okay. <laughs> they're not that rosy. Oh, okay. They are, but they're not. They're, uh, they are, but they're not. Right. You don't need makeup or anything, do you? Well. Yeah. You know. There's a little sheen in here. Yeah. <laughs> a little powder. A little powder. Found out today, by the way. Tell me. I, I was about to tell you this out there, and we got off topic, so now you guys are going to have to listen. Uh, you know, my day job. Uh -huh. uh, you yep, know, yep. Uh, I found out that I am the backup should, uh, as we're covering the eclipse, that I have to be the guy in the studio that actually will host that. That's awesome. And I was like, oh, are you, I was like, are you guys know what you're getting into? <laughs> have you watched the show? <laughs> have you, you seen the podcast? And can I bring my buddy Chris? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that would be fun. I will be. Don't. I've, I've got some news. Yeah. What's I mean, up? Big news. Big news. All right. So. Every year, there's an app called UDIS that disc golfers use to keep score. Yeah. Um, they were associated with, with the Professional Disc Golf Association and the Disc Golf Pro Tour till this year. And the PDGA decided they were going to do all the scoring. So, whatever. Right. But they rate courses every year. And out of 15,000 courses. I saw that. Persimmon Ridge in Greenbar, Arkansas is number six out of in the, the world. world. Is that not awesome? Here's Steve the best part. And Kim Jones. That's right. Have Here's the best part, though. Even though they're number six in the world, the top three are in Europe. 
So they're the top in the U.S. They're the top. They're they're one two. They're number three in the U.S. All right, shout out Greenbrier, Arkansas. Awesome man, ladies and, and gentlemen. You said Eclipse. They're yeah. having a they're having an A tier. Their very first A tier. They finally got an A tier, which A tier is uh, a lot more cash. It brings in a lot more touring pros, and that that particular tournament sits between Texas States, which is on the Disc Golf Pro Tour, right. And the Jonesboro Open, which is on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. So all these turn pros that are coming from Texas. Um, yeah. Man, that in. is awesome. They're rolling in the top female player in the world. That's fantastic. Yeah. That, that, uh, She's coming to play. I, I, shout out to Steve and Kim Jones. Because Absolutely. They, they have taken what was honestly just a, a little nine-hole uh, regular golf course and turned it into something that's literally world Let, class. Let's break that down to what it really was. It was a nine hole, get as drunk as you can and hit the ball as many times as you can. Yeah. Of course. I, oh, I know. I played it. <laughs> yeah. We had a really good time. I played it. Uh, but you know, that, that is so cool. Man. It is. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. It's been a, it's been a five year leap to even yeah. get an A tier. Um, so that's like the top level right under what's on the pro tour mm -hmm. so most people don't know the, that the word eclipse is a redneck term is that right oh yeah eclipse is toenails but sometimes he just gnaws them off <sighs> anyway sorry that was a good joke thank you thank you very but much disgusting it was disgusting <laughs> and i don't really feel bad about it what is it. the attraction with feet i haven't figured that out. okay Ever, in all my life i have never figured this out i'm sorry i haven't either I don't get it. What I don't the get hell, it either. Man. You know, Debbie and I have had this conversation before, and it's like, <laughs> you know, folks, that's a thing, right? Some people, I mean, if, if, if that's your thing. There's it, something it, wrong with you. Explain it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't, I don't, what? No, ooh. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Brother, ooh. What's that? Right. No, uh-uh. Gross. No, gross. First that's gross, nasty. Gross. That's nasty. That's just nasty. First of all, I don't know where my feet have been. Or yours. No, oh, I know where not my feet yours, have been. Not yours, but whoever I'm with. No, we're not. No. Yeah, I know we're where my next. feet have been, and trust me, after the end of a long, hard day. Yeah, no, nah, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> how did we get here? Well, how did we get here? I don't, you, you told a da bad dad joke. We're going to be talking about the little rascals here. Something nice, innocent, and, and, and fun. And here we are talking about feet. What a show. A, what a show. You can't get this just anywhere, yeah, you, folks. You, you nice. get, listen, and you get it for free unless... <laughs> watch this transition here. Ladies and gentlemen, you can be a producer for like a mere $3 a month. Yep. And it's uh, you can go to RetroShow.net, and you can support the podcast from there. And a lot of people do, and we're going to be giving them a shout-out in just a little bit. And uh, But for like, you know, for three bucks a month, come on. Guys, wait, listen, this is not so we can put money in our pockets. No, <laughs> this it's is, not. This is really so we can get equipment. And it, it, it is. That's it's, it. It's I mean, literally, it's just basically. It's, it's gear and upkeep. Yep. Here's, here's not, Chris is not going to be rolling this into his Swiss bank account. And then going on his private yacht no. over what we're making no. here. Trust no. me. I might get on a John boat. Yeah. <laughs> now we could. By the way, I got a new rod the other day. Did you? Yeah. Well, I'd, see, I got uh, the boys got me a, a gift card for Christmas from Bass Pro, and I finally got around to going down to Bass Pro. That's and, a trip. It is. I mean, you have to say, okay, I am going to Bass Pro. Right, because and you so, ain't going nowhere else. Yeah, so I, you know, I had 100 bucks to spend at Bass Pro. Yeah, absolutely. Which meant I spent a lot more than that when I was sure. at Bass Pro. And why do you think they sell gift cards? Yeah, exactly, because they know when you go in there. Because, you know, you see, you see this shirt I'm wearing right now? Yep, Bass, Bass Pro. Pro. Yep. Man, you, I, I'll tell you, that's one of those stores where you can just walk, walk in as a guy. Oh. You can walk in and spend a, a good while just walking around and looking yeah. at stuff. and. Have you ever been to the one that that's in the pyramid in Memphis? No, I that haven't been to that. Really, one. really cool because they built like an entire stream that runs through the store. Oh and wow! It's got trout in it. Well, I was sitting there talking. You know, it's really cool. I was because uh, you know because I went in there to get a rod, so I ended up getting a rod, some shirts. Debbie got some shirts for her, and then I also go and said, "Well, y'all you know, need some new spinner baits." So you know, it's like one thing leads to another, and this guy over here is like this. They had this like professional crappie guy over here that's holding a seminar, and I'm just listening. And I'm like, going, well, maybe I need a crappie rig. And I went, nope, nope, nope. 
<laughs> I do not. My trout rigs will work fine that's if I exactly wanted to go right. do crappie. But I, for a minute, I was like, well, you know, maybe I... <laughs> that's so, the one statement out of my mouth that Cindy Curtis hates. I need to go buy baits. Yeah. When she hears that, she's like... <laughs> It's going to be expensive. Yeah. So, because oh, cause when I stock up, when I'm out of something, I, I'll buy six, eight, ten. I'm always taking people fishing. Yeah. They don't ever have the right stuff. So, I make sure Never that do. people are catching fish. I'm not a professional guide, by the way. No. But I want people catching fish. But you told go. me what to buy before we went. Sure. And, and it worked. You told me to get the number six, Rapala. Mm-hmm. Number five. Number five, brown trout, Rapala. Mm-hmm. For trout fishing. You guys are fascinated by this, I'm sure. You gotta be. Listen, you gotta man, be. How, do you know how expensive Rapalas are now? I want what it's are they ridiculous. running? Now? It's about nine bucks. That's ridiculous. Wow. A bait. And you catch one big brown on that and it's done. It's done. <laughs> oh, a big one, yeah, to tear it up. It's done. Sorry, guys. Right uh, okay, home. okay. So Okay, back in. Ladies and gentlemen, we were going to be retiring for just a little bit here to tell you about our wonderful producers that help us out here on the Retro Show. And we come back, we're talking about the Little Rascals. These are the wonderful people who support the Retro Show with a monthly contribution of $3. LNC Corporation, Roger McDougall, Melinda Hignite, Dusty Breeze, Kevin Goff, Norton, Chris B., Nancy Schwartz, Joshua Ramsey, Fran Adams, E.M., Bradford Mason, Tonya Highland. Thank you to all of our fantastic supporters. Find out how you can support the podcast by heading to RetroShow.net. Thank you. Come on, get your meal. Let's get going. I guess I can't go. How come? I gotta stay home and grease Weezer. Gee, that's tough. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Retro Show. I am uh, your host, Butch Renfro. You know what we didn't do in the first segment? I know. I didn't introduce, ladies and gentlemen. Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis, ladies and gentlemen. They love me. They do. They love Look at them. Me. Look at them. She's back. She's back again. <laughs> Are you inviting this chick? Uh, she just shows up, dude. I think you got a stalker. <laughs> I do. Waiting on warmer weather, baby. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, this episode of The Retro Show, uh, we're going to be talking about a franchise that's over 100 years old. That's insane. It is. But why is it so important to us? Well, we're going to get to that. And that is, and I'm not going to say Little Rascals because it started off as Our Game. Our Game, yep. And it, the the little rascal's name came in actually later, and we'll, we'll we'll talk about that on here. But the hour gang shorts that were produced, uh, they were running those like in between movies at the movie. Yeah, theater. The, the, when you would go to the movie theater yeah. at the time, uh, you know, because this is this predates television, right? Okay, so when you went, to, that's how you got your information. They would show a newsreel. Then they would show a short, which mm-hmm. is what these were. These were shorts. Laurel and Hardy were shorts. Three Stooges were shorts. So they're all about tw- 10 to 20 minutes. When they went to the moving picture show. When they went to the moving picture show. <laughs> and then they would show the main feature. So right. so these shorts were produced. It was a thing that, you know, there were it used to be a lot of them produced uh, back in the day. And so what happened was is that for about a 20-year period, the Little Rascals were produced. And then... As we'll find out later on, they were repackaged for television stations and got a whole new life. Yes, and, which is kind of where we come in because uh, I remember they used to come on television at like five thirty six in the morning yeah. on school days, like mm-hmm. during the week. So Dad would wake me up in the morning. I would get my little bowl of cereal uh, before I had to get dressed, and I would watch Lone Ranger uh, or. Uh, depending Sergeant, on what they were showing, Sergeant Preston, Sergeant Preston and Little Rascals. Yep. And so that was my introduction to Little Rascals. And, um, you know, even though at the time it was something that was like 50 years old, it 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 resonated with me because it, it's kids. <clears throat> yeah, it was good. It's kids. And it's kind of, and so let's go back to like 100, it sounds weird to say, uh, almost like 102 years ago. 
a producer named Hal Roach, who uh, also produced Laurel and Hardy. Right. Um, so, you know, at, at that time, there weren't a lot of things that showcased kids, you know, being real kids. Right. And how this started is it the idea came to him in 2001. He had auditioned. Whoa, 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 whoa. 1921. I mean, 1921. <laughs> 2001. Uh, in edit. 19, edit. <laughs> so, no, I'm not. I'm going to keep it in there. All right. Yeah, you know. Uh, bumps and all. Uh, depends on how bumpy it is. Um, but according to Roach, the idea for our game started because he had auditioned this young child actress and noticed that she was overly made up, overly rehearsed. And, you know, it, he, it, that stuck in his mind. Well, one day he's sitting in his office and he's looking outside and he sees this group of just kids and the littlest kid there that, you know, they were playing with sticks like right. we all did. He had the biggest stick and everybody's telling the littlest kid, no, you have to give it to the biggest kid. And he watched this 15 minute drama play out <laughs> and realized he was engrossed yeah. in watching these kids. And that's where the idea of our gang came about. And the thing about our gang that was cool is it was always a group of kids that were either poor or from lower middle class. Right. And if there was a rich kid there, he was a snob or something like that. So it wasn't like, you know, right. uh, like a typical Hollywood portrayal of a characters. It was, it was kids, you know? And so from about 1922 to 1929, they were all silent. Really? That's yeah. I That's the know, ones we I don't know about. I didn't know that. There's a whole there's a whole series of those <clears throat> that you and I are probably not familiar with because they were the silent ones. They were not the ones that were produced huh. and repackaged for television. Uh, but in 1929, uh, the Howe Roach Studios were they were outfitted for sound because that was a thing that was coming. Yeah. All of the big studios were you know getting ready for you know sound movies. And so the that that's when they made the move there, and that's the ones we're familiar with. And so, like the first time, uh, you 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 had people like uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to think of her name here. It is uh, you remember uh, Mary? You had Weezer. I remember Weezer? And, uh, yeah, Weezer. Stymie. And Stymie, and then you had Farina uh, or Chubby. You know, which is like that's terrible. You would never get by with calling a kid Chubby sure. <laughs> as a character name. Uh, who was who was um, Spanky's older brother? Uh, well, that came later. Spanky's a, a couple yeah, of years he, from he here. He appeared as as the baby brother. He couldn't get sausage. His he, mom wouldn't give him sausage for yeah. breakfast, and his brother hated sausage. And his brother's handing it to Pete under the table, and Spanky yeah. gets out of his high chair and, eating and runs sausage. around. Yeah, he was sausage. only three years old. Yeah, when he did that. Yeah. One. Uh, he, he was in that episode at, it's not, wasn't called bug hunt, but I remember that was his line. What are you doing? I'm bug hunting. For heaven's sake, Spanky, what on earth are you doing now? Bug hunt. But also during this time, you had someone named Jackie Cooper. There's a kid named Jackie Cooper that was on these. Yeah. And he was in a lot of these. And he was the one that always had the crush on Mrs. Crabtree, the teacher, you know. Yeah. And uh but he was he was kind of the main male lead in for a couple of years on there. And where you know him from is later on, he actually had a career. He was Perry White in the Superman movie from nineteen seventy seven. Really? Yeah. Wow. So, you know, he had a long career. He was a he he ended up actually as a career as an actor was able to you know go on and be a character actor later on, but so you had like uh, Jackie Cooper and this is from like nineteen twenty nine to nineteen thirty one. Well, from thirty one to thirty three, it's kind of a transition period because Jackie Cooper leaves and he's their main guy there, and so they bring in um, a lot of different characters. Then that's when you had. Um, Oh, I'm trying to think here. Um, Weezer, uh, Chubby was still on there. Marianne Jackson were still on then. Uh, but they <clears throat> during this period, the transition, they, they were all kind of rotating through. Um, but then we mentioned Spanky, a, guy na- a kid named George McFarland. 
uh, joined the gang as Spanky in 1931 at the age of three. And that's the one we were talking about yeah. on there. And he remained there. He's like the OG. Yeah, you know, definitely. He was there. He was there for 11 years. He was a teenager. So when he 42? Left. Yeah, like 44. It was a la- Well, he was gone for a year. There, there's a year that he took off, and then he comes back. Uh, in, in 38, I think he left for a little while. But he started off as like the tag-along toddler. Right. You know, that was kind of his role in the shorts. Uh, he was the biggest child star. He rose up to just be, you know, and uh, to where the point where he was – kind of the main dude and he remained that way for a long time and from 1933 to 1936 was kind of like the big golden period that was you know uh, spanky's a little older they bring in like um you know th- this is when you have uh alfalfa come in uh <coughs> darla uh, uh, carl switzer uh <coughs> darla hood who played darla on there uh you know you have buckwheat a, a, a buckwheat and a porky and yeah. so you know, that was kind of, they did <laughs> a lot of That was the those. Little Rascals to me. Yeah, that was, to me, and to and, and I think to most people, that is the core group. Right. You know, when you think of Little Rascals, that's that's the group that you think of right there. And so, you know, um, the, but the problem was is during this time, by 1934, uh, these had been 20-minute shorts going up there. By 1934... Studios were kind of losing interest in shorts, and so they shortened them down to 10 minutes. That's why you'll see some of these later episodes. They don't last as long as some of the other right. o- other ones did. So, uh, Hal Roach sells his rights to MGM. Okay, He sells all of the contracts and everything. George Spanky McFarland leaves for about a year. At this time, they're pushing out Do Alpha Do you think Alpha. that was contract negotiations? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so they move him out, uh, and so Alpha Alpha kind of takes over as lead for some of these. You still had Darla there, but then they bring in some <clears throat> characters that uh, and and Porky is gone at this time because the kid that played Porky apparently hit a growth spurt. Oh, and he got like real big. Oh. <laughs> it's like he out, you know, he couldn't play the little the cute little kid because he was like, I don't know, Spanky. You know, it's like <laughs> so they bring in this character named Mickey. And he was actually, later on, this kid uh, would change his stage name to Robert Blake and would go really? on to star oh, that's in, right. in I Beretta. Forgot he, I forgot he was in Little And Rascals. so he was Mickey. And then yeah. you had Froggy. You remember Froggy? Yes. Talk like this, you yeah. know. Uh, you know, the, the kid sounded like he was smoking unfiltered Pall Malls, you know, constantly. Cartons. Uh, <laughs> you know, cartons of them. So, um, so anyway, that, that was during the MGM era. So... Let's let's go forward a few years. They they've stopped production on these. World War II's ended, and they kind of produced them through World War II. So now it's the early fifties. It's like five years later. So Hal Roach goes back and he buys the rights to our gang back from MGM. And okay. uh, even the back catalog of the ones that they produced, he now owns all of those. But through some kind of I don't know what the legal system was. He couldn't call them our gang anymore. So he repackages these to sell to television stations because television starting to take, take off, off now right. in the 50s. <clears throat> and this is why that The Little Rascals, something that was produced in the 20s and 30s, stayed in the national consciousness because it was syndicated to TV stations. We talked about syndication when we talked, talked about Gilligan's Island right. and how it gave it a long life, how it helped Star Trek... Same with this. Yes, yeah, same with this. And so it was just a part of the national consciousness, and it took off. There were our gang toys, comics, and everything during this time in the 50s because of the popularity of these shorts on television. And they just kind of stayed there. Even through the 70s when, when in 80s when we were growing up, you could find, yeah, you know. On some channel. On some channel. <laughs> Little Rascals were on there. And so, you know, that that was why that they were... And, and so now I just want to get into talking a little bit about some of my favorite episodes. And I want to see if you remember these. Okay. Okay. Do you remember the one where they go camping? It's one, it's one that has like a young, a young Spanky. And, you know, he... 
he is, you know, it's like he's the little guy and he's like got his gun and stuff, his little BB gun. And they go, can't, it's, it's one of the funniest ones. It's also got one of the earliest appearances of buckwheat in there. Really? Yeah. So, uh, I, but, vaguely, Butch, they all run together. Yeah. They really do. I mean, I watched, I've probably seen every one of them 10 times and they just all run together. Now. Yeah. I, I bought, <clears throat> I first bought, the VHS complete series. And then I got the complete series on DVD a few years ago. So I own every episode that was. Produced. So now you have the rights to, I have the rights <laughs> to them. Uh, uh, but my know. favorite episode was the one where Spanky was a baby and he was sneaking under the table, eating the sausages that I mentioned. Earlier. Yeah. I mean that really, that one always sticks out in my yeah. mind. That one and the He-Man woman haters club. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> with 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 alfalfa Alpha. Yeah. yeah which actually kind of leaded you know that was a big point in the movie because they uh first of all in the 80s they made a a comic a, a cartoon series yes with little rascals and so it, like i said it was a part of the national consciousness for such a long time and then in the early 90s they made a a movie they did you know and it was it was it, it was cute. It was I, good. I and work in a pediatric place, so yes, I've seen it. And I thought that seen they did a good it. job of casting kids that were reminiscent of the actors Very close. that that played those back in the day. Rabbit hole. Okay. Do you know what movie did a better job than that at recasting people in the roles? And that was when they um, relaunched Star Trek. With the new timeline, yeah, Chris Dude, Pine did so, great. Didn't I he? was so impressed with. I was impressed with what they did. Yeah, because um, I mean, we've talked about Star Wars and Star Trek on here. Yeah, and we're both pretty passionate about both of them. And I'm just, I'm always apprehensive about something like that. But yeah, I was impressed. Yeah, they can do it. Listen, they just got to search. Did you and I go see that together? I saw that at um, Chanel. I think you and I were there together. Probably so. I know we saw that there, and then we saw the Bond movie there. Which one? Uh, I don't miss one. So. The one that was in like 2009, 2008, 2009. Um, it's Daniel Craig. It was good. It was oh, really all, good. They're all good. Yeah. Right. It's either... Um, okay, <laughs> folks, at one point or another, <laughs> we're going to be talking James Bond movies on here, too. That's just something that we're going to have to There's do. There's like 24 of them. I know. They're awesome. It's awesome. They are. It'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, some of my favorite episodes though of Little Rascals, like you said, were the Alpha Alpha, Darla, Spanky, yes, uh, Porky, Buckwheat, that whole that that five member cast that was just so perfect to me. That was just it was it was a it's kind of like the Beatles. Yeah, they came along at the right time. They came along at the right time and just wowed an audience. Yeah. And they Gen- for generations for gen- literally generations. Yep. But see, here's my fear, because we got introduced to them because you know we only had limited options on That's what right. we could watch, and they would show these, and we got introduced. I'm afraid that once people not much older than us are gone, that it's going to be a forgotten franchise. That's possible. It's possible because a hundred years ain't bad, but a hundred years. That's a good run. <laughs> That's a good run, y'all. Um, so, if I was ranking, we're going to rank Rascals now. Okay. Okay. OG number one, Spanky. Absolutely. Spanky. I agree with you 100%. Alfalfa number two. Not for me. Uh, my number two is Buckwheat. And I, Buckwheat was going to be my number three. Yeah. Darla's my number three. Dar- Darla's my number four. <laughs> and then Porky. <clears throat> yeah. I'd have to go um um Alfalfa as my number four and then um Stymie as my number five. Stein Oh, you're going back. Going back. Yeah. Stymie okay. was Stymie was Buckwheat's older brother. Yeah. Now, one of my favorite episodes is one it's called The Bear Hunt. <laughs> and it's got Weezer in there. And one of my favorite lines is I can't go camping, guys. I gotta stay home and grease Weezer. Thank you very much. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this microphone makes a great headrest. Yeah. I'm just tell you. It's pretty soft. Spongy. Spongy. Yeah. Go in tomorrow at work and say, I can't come in tomorrow. I got to stay home and grease Weezer. See, and, uh, see how that works out for I'm you, sir. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> 
Oh man! If you get a chance, folks, and you you catch these on, they're they're hidden gems now. They are. And I, they're, I mean, they're, they're, they're I can hilarious. still watch them. I can too. I can. Um, any anybody that's got any any um, gumption to be entertained, yeah, could watch them for it's sure. Good stuff, man. It is good, clean and, stuff. All right, folks, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Absolutely. this episode of the Retro Show. I don't feel like I did very much. I'm just kind of sitting here listening to Butch, man. That's, that's awesome. okay, man. Uh, <laughs> but they love you, Chris. Like, I know, this right? is why they show up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We will be back again. And I know this because we're about to record that episode. <laughs> that's why when you say, he didn't change his shirt for two weeks. <laughs> I got to go to wardrobe. Yeah. AMF, guys. Lazy. Love you guys. Take care. Bye-bye.